America's legendary M1 Abrams main battle tank is living on borrowed time. That's the conclusion drawn by a new report published by the U.S. Army's Science Board outlining predictions about warfare in 2040 and beyond. Now, according to this report's findings, America's Abrams is just too big, too heavy, too fuel-hungry, and too old to make it past 2040. And the truth is, this isn't much of a surprise for the U.S. military. The mighty Abrams started development all the way back in the 1970s as a response to the latest and greatest Soviet tanks entering the field. And by the time the Abrams entered service in 1980, it was among the largest and most capable tanks on the planet. Now, in order to maintain that edge, the Abrams has undergone a number of significant updates and overhauls in the years since. But according to the Army Science Lab's findings, the latest iteration Abrams, the M1A2 SEP V3, is so heavy now that it is pushing the outer limits of what the chassis is even capable of. And all of that size and weight and its fuel-hungry power pack all make the Abrams extremely difficult to support logistically in far-flung battle spaces like you would likely find in the Pacific. And make no mistake about it, this report does reference Russia from time to time, but its primary concerns are China. Now, the Abrams started out at around 60 tons and today can weigh as much as 78. And according to the Army Science Lab, they'd like to see the Army transition to an Abrams-based tank that is significantly smaller, one that weighs in at less than 60 tons that the Abrams started out as. Now, they posit that you could do this by transitioning away from heavy armor and toward more active defensive measures, like systems that can dazzle the sensors on incoming missiles and kinetic interceptors that can take out inbound missiles and rockets before they actually reach the tank itself. They also posit replacing the tank crewman that loads the main gun with an auto-loader system, pulling everyone out of the turret and making the main gun and its supplementary weapons remote control. Now, this would make the tank far safer, but could potentially also make it lighter. A great deal of the weight associated with a tank goes into its crew compartment and protection for it. And by reducing its crew requirements by 25%, you can also dramatically reduce its weight. They also argue that the new tank should have a hybrid engine that reduces fuel requirements in the fight and, as a result, reduces the logistical strain of supporting them. In particular, the sheer size and weight of the Abrams just makes it very difficult to relocate these tanks in large numbers. But by switching to a smaller tank, you could fit more on every ship or in every aircraft and potentially field a larger force faster. But to supplement those numbers, the Army Science Lab also recommends fielding even smaller, non-crewed or autonomous AI-enabled tanks not too dissimilar from the Loyal Wingman program the Air Force is looking at for its next-generation fighters. Now, this would mean that each of these new tanks would operate alongside a handful or more uncrewed tanks that would take their cues from the tank commander inside that one-manned platform. And this could also dramatically increase combat capacity without increasing the number of troops required in the fight. Now, it is worth noting that while this doesn't sound like good news for the Abrams, we are talking about a potential conflict nearly two decades out. And the truth is, the Army already has the ball rolling on meeting many of these recommendations. Last year, General Atomics pitched what they call the Abrams X, which is a tank that would meet a lot of the requirements posited by the Army Science Board. Now, the U.S. Army has not said that they want to move forward with the Abrams X, but they did cancel plans to update the current Abrams to the SEP V4 earlier this year, and it seems likely that that may have been in part informed by some of these recommendations. Instead, it looks like they may be going with a new design that departs even further from the original Abrams than the SEP V4 would have, and that means that this new tank may just meet a lot of the requirements laid out in this report. Now, it is also worth noting that the U.S. Army recently started purchasing the M10 Booker, which sure looks an awful lot like a light tank, but the Army swears isn't. 
Now, the M10 Booker is designed to be an infantry support vehicle, but there's no denying that it could be modified to fill a light tank role, or even to support this new lighter version of the Abrams that may eventually manifest. At the end of the day, this isn't great news for the current iteration of the Abrams, but the Abrams itself may yet live on for some time, and if not that, elements of the upgrade programs for the Abrams over the years will almost certainly find their way into whatever new tank the army ends up fielding.